everybody. Today, Rado runs through Bremerhaven, which is an auction and logistics game where players are harbor masters doing their best to ensure a steady flow of goods coming off of ships and moving on to where they ultimately need to go as they pass through our harbor. I'm going to show you how this works today in a two-player run through. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel. So, if I make any rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then let's enter Bremerhaven. Now, this is the central board where the auctioning goes on. There are a whole bunch of spots where players can deploy their influence cards. At the beginning of the game, each player has five influence cards labeled one, two, three, four, and five. Now, you could almost think of these as workers going to worker placement spots to grab different resources and give yourself different actions you can do. But the problem is, this is a blind bidding game. And so the first half of every round, is players taking turn deploying these cards in secret to different um, spaces hoping that they will come up with the highest total value and that they will win the rewards of that space. Then the second half of a round is depending on what you did, maybe you got some building permits to build some stuff or you got new ships coming into your berths or you got new contracts you have to fulfill or you changed the value of um, goods in, on contracts, etc, etc. You then come over to your actual, oh, what would you call this, your, your storage area. You know, the docks. You come over to your dock where you are going to be offloading stuff from ships that are in these berths into these spaces. You can also upgrade your docks by doing construction so you have more storage and you are ultimately trying to fulfill contracts to get money. At the end of the game, your final score is the money you have on hand multiplied by the prestige of your dock. At the beginning of the game, we don't have particularly prestigious docks, but over the course of the game, this will go up and we'll have more and more cash on hand. And this can be a very, very high scoring game. Like we're talking like in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. But anyway, Let's go on ahead and start playing the game, shall we? Although, actually, just to give you a little bit more idea of what my situation is. I am the first player, or the captain, which means I start with the least amount of money. I've got four bucks or francs. Jen starts with six. I have zero prestige. I've got um, half of my spaces available. I've got two bollards, which means this is the only space where I can actually bring a ship in. I wouldn't be able to bring a ship in here until I've got a bollard here because there has to be bollards on both sides. Uh, it has to be bollards down here to put a ship down here. So that's one of the things you can upgrade is to have more active berths. I got one random contract and I have five rounds to fulfill that contract. That's what all these little clock icons are to keep track of how much longer I have to get one um, green container and one brown crate onto these trucks. If I do, I'll make some money. If I run out of time and don't do it, I'll lose some money. I'll suffer a penalty. So that's my contract going in. Jen, she has a slightly different contract. She's pretty much the same situation as me, except her contract. She only has four rounds to fulfill it. And it's a bus just waiting for a passenger. So Jen has to get a passenger off of a ship, which we'll be able to bid for, and then onto this bus to score it. All righty. So, and like I said, she's got four rounds. These little uh, time markers will keep track of that. So that's our situation. Let the bidding begin. All right, so I am the uh, high player, so I have to bid first. It's good being the first player because you get more income every round. Every round, as long as I stay first player, I'm going to get four bucks. And Jen is only going to get three, but that also means I'm the first to bid, which gives Jen information about what my intentions are. So anyway, I got to pick one of these guys and deploy them in secret. Now, looking around the different places I could go, this is an interesting space. This is the opportunity to get a building card, and there's a whole bunch of them. They all have very, very interesting and unique special powers that they will give you for the rest of the game. These can be real game changers. And every time you play, you just shuffle this deck up at the beginning. So every time you play, there's going to be a different series of buildings available. But Right now, the top one is Heavy Industry. Whoever gets this, well, first of all, this Heavy Industry doesn't increase the prestige of your docks at all. It's obviously not very nice. But every round uh, during stage four, I think it is, you will automatically generate 
one container worth of goods. That's pretty cool. Every round for the rest of the game. So this could be a lot of goods that you can get without having to offload them from ships and have to deal with the logistics of that. So this is one of the things I could bid for. Every round, take um, one container, which is the green tokens, uh, during the production phase of every round. So I could open with a bid on that. I would actually like to get that, particularly because if you recall, my first contract requires one of those green containers. And interestingly, the two ships that we could bid on to bring in, this little speedboat brings in a passenger. I don't want passengers. I don't have a contract with little passengers. But I know Jen does because I can see her contract. So I know she wants that. Now, I'd like to get this ship because, hey, it gives me a brown crate. That's the other thing I need. So if I could get heavy industry, and I could get this ship coming into my port, then I would be able to get all the resources I need to fulfill my first contract, which would be amazing to fulfill this contract on the first turn. Although the interesting thing is, even if I fulfill it in round one, it won't pay out for five rounds. It's going to stick around for five rounds. And if at the end of those five rounds, I've delivered what it needs, that's when it pays out. So this is a game of logistics in that time and managing your limited space is a big, big part. So I'd like to get this. I'd like to get this too, but I'd really like to get this. This is really awesome. So you know what? I'm going to go in big. I could just go in with my biggest card, my number five, but I'll hedge my bets a little bit and I'll bid a four. Right. So that is the first bid. And now Jen, I've tipped my hand. Jen knows I want that. And if she wants it, she's going to have to fight me for it. It is a really cool building, no doubt about it. And so, you know, Jen, but here's the thing, Jen has no idea, did I bid one, two, three, four, five? She could go on ahead and say, well, he probably only bid a three, so what the heck? She could bid a four now, and then she could stop right there, and when all, all the bidding is done, once we've played all our cards, we'd reveal, and we'd see that, oh, look at this, I won the bidding, because in the case of a tie, the current player order breaks that tie. I'm the captain, the tie would break in my favor. But the thing is, if Jen did this, I might be worried that, oh no, what if she bid a five? I went with a four, but if she went for a five, I might lose this heavy industry. Which means on a future turn, I could double down and put another one on it, or a two or a three. I can put as many cards as I want just to ensure I get that, if I really want it. But that means I'm not spreading my workers out as much and getting other stuff done. But anyway, so that's just like, uh, all right, so I've made my bid. I've bid pretty high, but Jen doesn't know that. Jen, I might be bluffing. I might have bid with a two or a three, and I hope I get it without having to spend one of my heavier guys. Who knows? But as it turns out, I really want that, so I bid high for it. Jen doesn't know that. Now, Jen's going to make an opening bid, and where is she going to go? Huh, let's see here. Well, remember, Jen has that contract to get a passenger. This speedboat is delivering a passenger. I think she would definitely like to get that passenger, so she will put a bid over here to get this speedboat. Okay, and now it is my turn. I've got four more bids to make. And if I wanted, I could say, hey, you know what? That's a pretty nice looking speedboat. I might like that for myself. And I could come over here and try to outbid her. Or again, I could bluff. I don't care about that speedboat. I don't need a passenger. I could send my little Weasley one guy over here, and that might scare Jen enough to actually put another bid on here because I know it's more important for her than me. Mind games in this blind bidding is a big, big part of it. So I could go that way, or I could live and let live and be a little bit more friendly because ultimately this ship is better for me because it's actually delivering what I want. Um, although, you'll notice there are other contracts. I can have up to four contracts on the go. I've got one. If I grab this contract with this busing line, I need to get, I have five rounds to get two passengers. So if, if I were to say make a bid for this and then a bid for this, Jen knows she's got a fight on her hands because she could see how I want to get some passengers too. If I were to go for that over a course of a couple of turns. Hmm. But here's the thing. Okay, so uh, if I win this, and so far Jen hasn't fought me on it, if I win this heavy industry, I just take the card, but I don't install the industry. To be able to do that, I need a second step. I need to come to the construction space and win a building permit as well. I need to spend money um, to get a building permit and build this thing. So I think I'm going to send my next worker over here. 
And I'm still saving my big guy in case Jen decides to fight me on something I want. So I'll send my next biggest. I'll send my three over here. And I'm hoping to be unmolested, unmolested and get the building permit I need to install my heavy industry. Okay, so that was my turn. Now it is Jen's turn again. And I believe she will go, she'll make a bid and boom, she's moving in on the working permits as well. Now that's a little scary, but not as scary as it might seem. There's two types of these worker placement slots or these bid slots we can use. Um, this one, this one, this one, this one, and these ones, they all are uh, high bid wins. Only one winner in all those spaces. But the, the work permit spot and the workforce upgrade spot everybody gets to do this action no matter what. Um, it's just that whoever bids the highest gets to do the action for free and whoever bids lower has to pay the difference. So, I mean, what did I bid? I bid a three. I don't know what Jen has bid. I think I just accidentally showed you, but pretend you don't know what Jen has bid. So I bid a three. If Jen just bid a five, then she's the high bidder. She'll get a work permit for free and I'll have to pay the difference, two bucks difference to get that work permit. But I'll still be able to do it. And remember, I started with four francs. So anyway, that was Jen's bid. Now, if I want to be the high bidder so that I get to do it for free, hey, I could say I've got a three. I could send my five over, my two over here. Now I've got five. Even if Jen sent her five, I know that I'll win. But that's less workers I can send elsewhere. So. I could just hope that Jen bid low so that if she wins the bid, I don't have to pay much to make up the difference, uh, which means I could do stuff elsewhere. Because another thing I would like to do very much is upgrade my workforce. That's a hugely important move. I'm going to use my most powerful guy. Jen hasn't scared me yet. Jen hasn't um, shown any interest in fighting me on heavy industry. So I'm going to go ahead and send my biggest guy over here to invest in upgrading the quality of my workforce. That's my next bid. So what is Jen going to do? Jen, I think, is going to put a bid over here. Jen wants my captaincy! So what's going to happen is, if I don't outbid her, when we get to resolving this, whatever Jen, if Jen's the only one bidding here, she wins and she gets to rearrange so that she will become the captain. She wins ties and she makes a buck more. Because she'll become captain and I'll become first mate. Oh noes! So, that's an interesting conundrum. I've still got two cards. I could send one or heck, uh, over two turns, I could send both of them over here to try to hold on to my captaincy. There's a dollar um, you know, in the mix, but there's other places I want to go as well. Now here, I don't particularly care about going here because this says what the current value of commodities are. If this round I was going to complete a contract, I would care very much what this is. Remember, in five rounds from now, I will complete this contract. So on round five of this game, I might want to bid over here to make sure that green and brown are the most valuable they can be. Because heck, if I was completing this contract right now, I don't a green and a brown would make me only four bucks. That's not great. I'd like to make four and three so that I can make a total of seven off of this. But that means I'd have to bid here and win because there's enough cards in this stack so that every combination of one, two, three, and four is available for all the different commodities. So in five rounds from now, when I complete this contract, you better believe I'm going to try to stack the deck in my favor. But I'm not worried about that right now, and neither is Jen, because she doesn't complete her contract for four rounds. So I don't think anybody's fighting on this right now. That'll be interesting a little bit later. So where else can I go? Where else can I send my last two guys? Well, um, remember, I could supplement my bid here if I want to try to make sure that I get for free, because right now I'm worried that Jen might have outbid me. I could come over here. Now, this is interesting. This is kind of, a, if you've got nothing better to do, send your workers over here. It doesn't matter what the value of your worker is, other than you have to have the winning, you have to have uh, the highest total bid here. But if you do, you get one dollar, one franc, for every card you send. Doesn't matter what the value is. So if I send my last two cards here, and Jen doesn't fight for this, I'll make two points, or I'll make two dollars, which is worth at least two points. But remember, at the end of the game, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply how much money we've got by our prestige. At the end of the game, if I've got 20 prestige, every dollar is worth 20 points. So a couple of point, a couple of bucks here or there, that can be a big deal, depending on how prestigious I get by the end. So I could go for that. I could fight Jen for her speedboat. I could go on ahead and make an early, you know what? I think I'd like to get myself another contract. I'd like to have two contracts on the go. So I've got both of these are going to take five turns before they come to fruition. This one needs a passenger and a brown crate. 
This one needs two passengers. I don't really want to fight Gen Tooth and Nail for passengers. I think I will go on ahead. I'll try to get this passenger crate. Now, I'm going to send my lowest guy because if I don't get the contract, I don't mind too much because who knows? Gen might try to outbid me. So, that's my next to last. Jen's got two more bids as well. And where is she going to go? Hmm. Let's see. Jen is, Jen would also like to upgrade her um, workforce. So, she's going to make a move in there. And now, my last bid. So I could come over here and if I win, I make a buck. I could come over here. Oh, that's right. Remember, I want this ship to come in so I could get that crate. I need that crate for my first contract and for my second contract. So let's have my last bid be over here. And Jen breathes a sigh of relief. She now knows she's not going to, I mean, she saved a card. She was saving this just to be sure she could get this speedboat to come in. But now this is the final bid. She, um, she won't get outbid on this. She's safe. So does she turn the tables? Does she try to outbid me? But here's the problem. Um, Jen, remember, at the beginning of the game, we only have one active berth. If Jen comes over here, because she doesn't know what I bid, but if she wins this, she doesn't have room for two ships. But remember, um, with the build permit, one of the things she'd be able to do is add another bollard to one of her docks so that she could have two active berths and bring two ships in. So she has more goods coming in. So she could try to outbid me there. She could try to outbid me there. She could get this contract completely for guaranteed sure. Um, she doesn't have to raise her bid here because she knows she's got it. I didn't fight her on that. I'm giving up the captaincy. She's going to have it. Now this is interesting. Um, let's see, I've totally forgotten what she bid on these two things. So. Remember, whoever wins, everybody gets to do these actions, but whoever wins gets to do it cheaper. I think Jen is going to double down on this because she, she doesn't know what I bid. She doesn't want to take a chance, though. She, this last card could come over here and get her a buck. Hmm. A buck, which if she gets it, she could then spend in case, you know, so this is nice. She might have already won this bid. She doesn't know. And if she did, then she doesn't need to bump herself up anymore. Although the interesting thing is, if she already won, the higher this is, the more money she makes me pay. Because remember, if I come in second, I've got to pay the difference. Or she could just come over here and get an extra buck. So that if it turns out she loses, she'd have the extra buck. She needs over here to get her permit. I think she'll go with that. Right. The bidding is complete. We are done bidding in the town boards. And now we flip everything and we find out who's a winner and who's a loser. Of course, Jen, this is kind of overkill to spend, send a three, but she was saving that in case she needed something else. All right. And um, now she could have fought me for the end of the industry, but she's glad she didn't try because as she sees, she would have lost because uh, she sees how I want that. Here's the first interesting one. Boom. Jen won. So this is interesting. If Jen had sent this three over here, her total bid would have been seven. Mine would have, and so for me to get a work permit, I would have had to pay four extra bucks. That would have been hugely debilitating. So if Jen had put this here, she would have really put the hurt to me. But instead she didn't, she went over there. Let's continue to reveal, let's see here, oops. There we go. Oh, it's a tie. And the tie breaks in my favor because I'm the captain. And then later on, Jen will become the new captain. And let's see, over here, I got this ship for a two. Jen got this for a two. We both kind of had, you know, we didn't bed too high on that. And I got that contract for a one. Okay, so we reveal everything. Now we resolve these in order from left to right, left to right. In fact, there's little numbers 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1.4, um, you know, 2.1, 2.3, um, you know, and so on. Actually, I should say, by the way, I've set this game up kind of funky. As I'm playing a two-player game, the, um, the, this uh, shipboard is supposed to be twice as long to have more spaces for more ships if you're playing a three- or four-player game. Same for the contract board, but I just make I just cut them in half because as a two-player game, there's only ever two active contracts and two active ships. But with more players, those boards would have been longer to make more room for more ships and more contracts. You know, I just had to mention that. So we now start resolving stuff. Hey, Jen makes a buck, and she's really kind of regretting. Although, you know, that would have been... This would have been a real dick move. If Jen would have done this, she would have put the hurt to me so bad. But anyway, so Jen just got an extra buck. Which remember, at the end of the game, that could be 20 points. Who knows? All right, now me, I got the heavy industry, and I reveal in round two, we can bid to get a dry dock added to our dock, which is a great money maker over the rest of the game, particularly if you get a lot of ships coming through. This can combo nicely with that. But in the meantime, I take this heavy industry. But I don't put this on my board yet because I haven't built it. I've just got the rights to set up heavy industry. Now we move over here. 
and Jen won the bid, so she gets a building permit for free. Now, there's three things you can build with a building permit. You can build a building card if you've got one. Jen doesn't have one of these. You can, coming over to Jen's board, the other two things you can do with that building permit is you can start clearing space out, which gives you more storage space. Because over the course of the game, you'll have more and more ships coming in, dropping goods off, and you'll need to store those goods until you can get them on a contract. So having more storage space is nice. Plus, and this costs one buck to clear this. It costs two bucks to clear that space out. Another bonus, if you clear this space out specifically, you can have three active contracts. If you clear this space out, you can have four active contracts. Now I should say, you can have up to four contracts, but these are the only two you can fulfill. You could put a contract here, but you can't fulfill it until you clear this space out. But the other thing you can do is, you, you can build a building cart, you can clear space out, you know, develop your dock, or you can pay to get another bollard on. And that's what Jen's going to do. She's going to pay one franc to get um, another bollard right there. So now, Jen has two active berths. She could have two ships. Although, only small ships. Small ships require one bollard. But over the course of the game, this ship deck and the contract deck are stacked. So at the beginning, we have the ones, and then the twos, and then the threes, and then at the end of the game, the fours. And as you might imagine, at the end of the game, the ships coming in are bigger. This ship requires two bollards. Um, two bollards, two bollards. This ship is huge. It brings in five um, passengers, but it requires three bollards. It's also a huge um, influence on the prestige. If you can get this massive cruise liner to come in, and you um, unload all these passengers, five of them, that means you need a lot of space to unload all these people. People. You need a big um, berth to be able to do it, but that in potentially increases your um, prestige by five. And remember, your prestige is a multiplier for how much money you have. But anyway, the early ships, they all require one bollard. And what that means, bollard are like, you know, the, the cleats that you tie your ships up to. Um, because there's a bollard on either side, this berth can take a size one ship. If Jen later on gets more bollards and builds a second one here and a second one here, she can have a size one ship in this berth and a size two ship in this berth. She can't have anything in this berth because she hasn't built any of these bollards. So that's one of your most calm, as the game goes on, you need to invest in bigger and more berths um, so you can get more and more ships in, so you can get more and more goods offloaded, and you need more space to offload those goods so you can fill more contracts. But anyway, so right now, Jen paid one buck, so she's got a second active berth. That was Jen's build action. And now it's my build action. And because the difference is only one, I have to pay one buck to get this permit. It would have been four bucks if Jen had come here and that would have been crushing, but I only have to pay one. And now I've got the same thing. I could build a bollard like you saw Jen. I could clear out some more space or this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to build me some heavy industry. Now, it doesn't, I've already paid the influence I needed to get this card. All I needed was the building permit. I just paid one for the building permit, and now I just get to put this in any empty space I want. This is now going to clog up my docks for the rest of the game to make room for the heavy industry, but it means every round I'm automatically generating one container for free. I don't have to worry about ships coming in to bring it to me. So, that was, oh, that's not it. We can keep going. So everybody gets their initial permit they build, but players can get additional permits if they want. But the cost for every additional permit is the high bid. So if Jen wanted more bollards or more clearance or whatever, she could pay four francs now to, do a, to get a second permit to do a second build action. Same for me. I could pay four francs to get a second build action. If, um, yeah, yeah. But I think neither, I mean, later on in the game, when you got a lot of money and you're desperate to get a bill done, you might pay that extra cost, but we'll leave that alone for now and move on. Hey, over here, this is upgrading our workforce. It's a tie, five to five, but I'm still a captain because we haven't resolved this yet, so the, the tie breaks in my favor. That means I get to upgrade for free. Remember at the beginning of the game, I had a deck of bidding cards that were one, two, three, four, five. Whenever you come here, you add a new high level card, and at the end of the round, you get rid of your lowest level card. So having come here, I've replaced a level one with a level five. That is a huge shift. And here's the thing. 
because I went there, Jen felt like she had to go there too. If neither of us go there, then um, it's really not that big a deal to fall behind on the influence because everybody has the same influence. But as soon as somebody goes there, other players are going to want to go there too to keep up on the influence race. Unless, of course, because we both, I mean, Jen might have been desperate to get another ship or to do another build or something like that. But anyway, so I get to do an upgrade for free. So I'm going to take this and at the end of the round, I will add this to my hand and I will eliminate this one. Jen, she does the same thing, but she has to pay the difference. Remember, I had to pay the difference over here. I had to pay one. She has to pay the difference. The difference is nothing. Since she tied me, she doesn't have to pay anything, and she gets her upgrade for free, too. We both valued this upgrade so much that we set our biggest guy. And again, if Jen had you know, buffed up her bid over here, then she would have gotten um, her upgrade for free, and I would have had to pay the difference. I would have had to pay three bucks for the difference. So you can see how the bidding for these two actions can get very aggressive. It, it's perfectly reasonable. And you know, Jen, she was taking easy on She had this card. She figured, what the heck, I'll take a buck. If she had sent this to either of these two spots, she would have crushed me. And it would, because I only have three bucks left. And that would have been a big setback. And that's really the crux of the game. I mean, Jen, she was playing, she was treating me with kids' gloves by not coming over here. That's a big advantage of being last. You can be the last person in any place and really push something over the top. Anyway, though, so we both got an upgrade for free because Jen was super nice. Now we come over here. If somebody had come here, they would get to look through this deck to set the prices however they want. But because nobody came here, the prices changed on their own. You just um, put the one on the bottom, and hey, now delivering, delivering passengers was two, it's still two. But brown crates went from one to four. This would be a very good turn to complete contracts with ground crates. Although this round and the first round, nobody's completing any contracts because mine doesn't complete for five rounds, Jen doesn't complete for four. So that's it. Coming over here, Jen becomes the new captain and whether somebody comes here or not, whether these things shift around, everybody gets a payout. Jen makes four more bucks, so there's a five and one back, and I make three bucks, so there's one, two, three for me. So that's our income that we can use next turn if we need more building and whatnot. Okay, so let's continue. Hey, I got this ship. So this ship, now this is interesting, this is a fishing boat. It's got just a load of fish and it's not going to stick around. It's only going to stick around for one round and then it's going to leave and clear out. And I'll get this crate. But while it's in my um, port, it's worth three prestige. All right. And so I got that one. Jen got what she wanted. This speedboat is going to stick around a while longer. It's going to stick around for three rounds and Jen's going to get that passenger she needs to complete her contract in five rounds. All righty. And Jen has two different berths she could put that in. All right. And finally, hey, I gave myself a second contract. I, need to, uh, I have five rounds to get a passenger and a brown crate. And I've got a brown crate coming in on that ship. So now I take one of these little things and I put the five round markers on it. And the thing is, it's very important to remember, the logistics of this game is such that even if I fulfill this earlier, this contract won't pay, won't pay out um, for, again, five rounds, just like the contract I already have. Okay, so... We have resolved all of the auction stuff. The first half of the round is over. Now we go to the second half, step four, where we actually do work in our docks. So let's go on ahead and show you how that works. Let's come back over here to me. Now everybody can do this simultaneously or everybody can do it one at a time to check everybody if you don't trust your opponents and you think they might be swindling you. But anyway, I'm just, I'll, I'll, so I'll do them one at a time because I can only do them one at a time, but this is a thing where everybody can work simultaneously normally. Okay, so, hey, what do I get to do? It's a reminder right down here in step four. First of all, any buildings that have a gear, they produce. My heavy industry produces a shipping container. And um, each one of these spaces can only have either one card or one token. So this space is now full with this stuff I got. Let's see, this ship brought in Right, okay, so, and I'm done with production. Now, I can move stuff around. This ship brought in a brown crate. I'm gonna move it off the ship. Hooray, there we go. And, um, oh, excuse me. Uh, so now, I've got, I only have two more spaces to hold stuff before I'm completely full. Uh, um, but I can, anytime I want, as I'm moving stuff around, I can move stuff off. I can go on ahead and move this brown crate over here. And um, if I wanted, I could put this green crate over here as well. And boom, that contract is complete. But there's another thing you can do during this phase. If you spend a buck, you can convert a green crate into two brown crates 
or turn brown crates into a green crate. So, I mean, it's called stacking and unstacking. The crates become containers. So if I wanted, I could spend a buck and turn this into two brown crates, and then I'd have the brown crate I need for this. But I'm not going to bother with that, because next turn, heavy industry is going to make me another green, which I could then spend a buck to break up so that I can complete or I can fulfill that contract. So I'll just go on ahead and clear the space out and get these done. And so my contract is complete, but it won't pay out for five rounds. All right. And let's see, what else? So I've unloaded. And I've loaded, I activated stuff. Now I check my prestige. I look at the star value of everything I've got. My industry doesn't give me any prestige, but this um, very famous trawling vessel, the ship, this fishing ship, brings three prestige in. So I just go one, two, three. Now here's the thing if I, from a previous round, had already been at prestige five, let's say, to go higher, I have to have a higher prestige. Having, um, you know, having a ship that's lower prestige doesn't push my prestige up. To go higher than five, at any given time, I would need to have six or seven or eight. So it's kind of a cumulative thing. But three is higher than zero. So my prestige is now three. This means if the game were to end right now, every dollar I have is worth three points. Thanks, fishing ship. And now the last thing I do is time passes. This ship was only ever going to stick around for one. It goes away. But these two contracts I've got, they're going to be around for a while longer. All right, so there they go. And th so that was me doing my phase. Let's see what Jen did at the same time over in her neck of the woods. Now, she didn't get, she doesn't produce anything. She doesn't have any special buildings. She'll go on ahead and offload this passenger. And what the heck, she'll go on ahead and load him over here. So she's got that contract done, but it's not going to pay out for four rounds. Um, she has no green or brown, so she can't do any conversion. So her prestige, just like me, it goes up by three. One, two, three. So, but here's the thing. Jen has two berths. Next round, if she gets two ships, chances are she'll have a bigger combined um, prestige and she'll be able to push up even higher. Or next round, dry dock is an interesting thing. If you have a dry dock building, normally when you, um, you know, when, when a ship, when it, when it times out, it just goes away. Like how you saw, I just discarded this fishing ship, it's gone. But if you have dry dock, instead of just discarding the ships once their time is up, you put them in dry dock, and then they can continue to contribute to the prestige of your dock and make money. If you've got a ship in dry dock, you know, because they're scraping off barnacles and stuff like that, you're making money off of that and you're increasing your prestige. So next turn, Jen might be the one to try to win this dry dock. Uh, because she set herself up to be able to get more ships. And, um, you know, because the thing is, in three rounds, this speedboat is going to go away. Jen would love to keep the speedboat around for three additional rounds in dry dock, making her money and, and um, prestige. But in the meantime, let's see. So uh, she offloaded and loaded up. And now the interesting thing, why well, I said logistics, the logistics is pretty simple. There's no having to worry about moving things around or doing any kind of sliding puzzle. You, to offload, you have to have an empty space. To fulfill a contract, you have to have empty space. So you can't move things. If all six of these spaces were full, Jen would not be able to offload this passenger. You can't just move things directly from a ship to the contract. And later on in the game, as you get bigger and bigger ships come in, all these spaces will fill up very quickly. And then you'll have boats waiting. And you're like, I'm trying to clear room by getting a contract so that I can get stuff out, so I can get the things off before the time runs out. That's a big part of the game, is this juggling balancing act as bigger and bigger ships come in and you don't have room to deal with stuff. Unless, of course, you upgrade to get more space. But as it is right now, at the beginning of the game, it's easy going. Jen has all the space she needs to offload it and complete this. All right, although again, so she checks her prestige, it's three, and now time ticks down. This ship is going to go away, and that bus is going to take off. Let's see, wait a minute, that bus should have had, oh wait, yeah. Uh, it got bumped, there we go. So that bus is going to leave in three rounds, the ship is going to leave in two, the boat, the yacht. All right, so that was Jen's turn. And now the last thing we do on a round is, uh, step five, we do some cleanup, which means first of all, the first thing we do in step five is we check the local paper, which is basically this is a randomized deck of event cards. You shuffle it up every time. And uh, when we get to step five, if there is a page here that tells us an event, that event happens. Now, in the first round, there was no event, so we can ignore that. And so first we would deal with the event if there was one here. Then we deal with time passing. This one says the timer moves forward one space. This is the timer for the game. Once this little ship moves all the way off, that triggers the end of the game. 
So, and so you don't know exactly how long the game is going to be because these could be ones, twos, or threes. Sometimes the ship will make a big move, sometimes it'll make a small move. This time it made a small move. Then we flip this over and we can see, oh, next round the ship is going to move very slowly, but there's some twos. There are threes, aren't there? Or maybe they're all only ones and twos. We could have sworn there were some threes. Or maybe they were, that, there is a fast version of the game. No, I guess they're just ones and twos. My memory is failing me. But anyway, so we flip that over. Next round, the ship is going to move by, again by one space. But in the meantime, at the end of round two, we are going to have to deal with the event defamation, which, as it says right here, immediately at the end of the next round, everybody loses one prestige, move our marker um, you know, down one, but not below zero. So there's nothing we can do about that. And what that means is, next round, it's not a particularly interesting round to try to increase your prestige because you'll lose it anyway. Uh, because remember, prestige is interesting. You, it, it doesn't, I, I said cumulative, but that was wrong. It doesn't just accumulate round after round after round. To get prestige in a given round, you have to have higher prestige than you had achieved in a previous round. In round two, that's not going to be worth pursuing because you'll lose some of that progress. So round two, because of this defamation story that's going to ha happen, is not, it, it's going to change the tenor. Now round two, it could have been this, it could have been customs, which is, um, oh, that's a particularly bad thing. But there are good things too, like an economic boom, or it could have been pirates, or it could have been um, smugglers, or it could have been a, a rise, a, you know, a, Oh yeah, an economic rise, uh, you know, which is a good thing for everybody. So there's good and bad things, but the important thing, whether it's good or bad, you have the entire next round to prepare to deal with it if it's bad, or pre to prepare to leverage it if it's good. That's brilliant. All events should work this way. Well done, Bremerhaven. Anyway, so we now know next round is not a good time to try and build our prestige, which is kind of a bummer, because Jen was thinking about getting the dry dock and stuff like that. We'll worry about that in a bit. But, and next round we can see the timer is going to move one step further along. And then the last thing we do is we get all our guys back. But remember, both Jen and I upgraded, so we both dump our lowly level 1s and replace them with our new additional level 5. So now Jen and I have 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. And you know, if I was playing with more players and somebody hadn't upgraded, maybe because they didn't have the money to pay the difference or whatever, that player would be at a disadvantage because they'd still be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whereas me and Jen are a 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. And if we do it again, we get rid of our 2 and replace it with a 6. And then we get rid of our 3 and replace it with another 6, and so on. So you can get, more, you can get stronger and stronger workers to win the blind bids. All right. So anyway, so we, we both upgraded, we come back, and um, we start the next round of bidding. Oh, also, one thing, nobody took this contract. If there's a contract or a ship in the last space, it, it goes. Somebody, you know, they, they got sick of waiting, so new ones are going to come out. Uh, you know, it goes, old ones slide over, and then new ones come out. So uh, slides over, and all right, and so next round, we've got dry dock we can build. We don't know what the value of stuff is going to be. Jen is the first player. She has to make the opening bid. There's an oil tanker coming in, dropping off some oil, some more brown crates off of this uh, shipping container, and a truck waiting for oil and brown crates. Hey, this plus this could be very nice for me if I get the oil and I've got brown crates. Because remember, I am automatically, every turn, generating green crates that I can then convert to brown crates. Um, and, ooh, or get this ship and fulfill this contract. But... Not only do you have to pay attention to um, you know, what they're bringing in and what they can fulfill, but how long. If you take this contract, it would, I mean, the, the truck is not going to get here. Even if I fulfill it right away, I'm not going to be able to get rid of this truck. It's going to clog up my, bo my board for five rounds. So that's something important. It's interesting. There are buildings you can have that let you manipulate time so that things will leave sooner or stay longer if you need them. There's all kinds of cool stuff. But anyway, going into the next round, dry dock is up for bid. These are up for bid. Um, more uh, building opportunities are up for bid. Jen has 11 bucks. I have one, two, three, four, five, six bucks. Increasing your workforce is up for bid. And we know that this is not a good round to try to increase our prestige. And we keep going like this round after round until time passes, triggers the end of the game, and at the end of the game, you multiply your prestige times your money, and that's your final score in Bremerhaven. And now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, folks, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.